Automation technology was first introduced by Nikola Tesla in 1891, when he unveiled his wirelessly controlled boat at the Electrical Exposition at Madison Square Garden. Ever since then, humans have strived to explore the many ways in which we can use automation to make our lives easier, bring us closer together, and understand what it really means to be human in an increasingly technological world. It wasn't until Isaac Asimov first coined the term robotics in 1941 that we realised that automation technology, artificial intelligence, and mechanics could be used to create a new kind of humanity, one entirely automated to work for us and alongside us. Fast forward to 1967. The world's first life-size humanoid robot was created by Waseda University. A new dawn had broken, and the melding of technology and humanity was finally actualised for all to see. But what does this mean for native humankind? If we can create robots that look like us, work like us, speak like us and interact like us, then how long will it be until we no longer understand what it truly is to be human? So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at the ways in which robots are used in society. What are humanoid robots. According to Malachi Eaton, computer science and information system lecturer for the University of Limerick, the study of humanoid robots is concerned with autonomous human-like robots that mimic the body or aspects of the sensory, processing, and motor function of humans to a greater or lesser degree. In general, humanoid robots tend to be constructed with a human-like form with a head, a torso, two arms, two legs, and a face. However, these generally only mimic the form of humans. Realistic humanoid robots mimic the skin, hair, and facial features of humans in their entirety. Initially, humanoid robots were mainly created and used as research tools to better understand the human body and to find ways to translate the human form and experience into that of computational models of human behaviour. However, the initial purpose for humanoid robots has since developed into many different fields, including that of companionship, socialisation, and even healthcare. For example, we can now build better orthosis and prosthesis materials for humans with physical disabilities, limb loss, and various other ailments that prevent us from using our human bodies. Therefore, it can be said that research into and development of the humanoid robot has opened the possibility for the enhancement and advancement of humanity. Nadine Nadine is a humanoid female appearing social robot that's aesthetically modelled with a strong human likeness and realistic features. This means she has a familiar, approachable appearance and can therefore offer comfortable, familiar companionship to humans in need. Furthermore, Nadine is socially intelligent. Her artificial intelligence software allows her to return a greeting, make eye contact, and remember a large amount of personal data. She can also recognise the people she's already met, alongside all of the conversations that she's had or will have over the course of her lifespan. This makes for the perfect lifelong companion for all, because she'll remember everything about her owner and will therefore be able to assist with everything, from ongoing healthcare needs and psychological support to everyday chores and errands. At the moment, she's been programmed to speak six different languages, including, and not limited to, English and Japanese. This means she can be welcomed into homes across the globe, unrestricted by any language barriers. Nadine is also particularly humanoid because her AI software means she's programmed with a personality of sorts. This is shown through her ability to change behaviour according to the situation that she's in what is said to her, and the expressions of the faces on the humans talking to her. These are visible through the vision sensors and cameras in her eyes. Sophia Sophia is an empowering social robot developed by Hanson Robotics in Hong Kong, and was first brought to life in February 2016. She closely resembles the appearance of a Caucasian woman. She has capabilities including scripting software, an AI chatbot system, an open cog, an AI system used for general reasoning. As a citizen of Saudi Arabia, she's the first and only non-human to be granted citizenship of any country, 
and the first non-human to be named Innovation Champion of the United Nations Development Programme. According to her creator, David Hansen, Sophia was created in order to speak out on women's rights in Saudi Arabia, a country notorious for its lack of feminist rights. Hansen Robotics, the creators of Sophia, have suggested that humans could even end up marrying humanoid robots or droids. How could humanoid robots be used to change human relationships? The term humanoid robots is ultimately an umbrella term that encapsulates an entire spectrum of human-like robots in both appearance and functionality. Their uses range, and as our technology increases, AI will soon be filling out more of the human's roles. Humanoid robots are changing the way we deal with everyday life, limiting human interaction with automated delivery and collection services, droids that will perform the tasks of a maid, and even AI chatbots that remove the human element entirely. Human-to-human relationships are already so dependent on technology nowadays that it won't be long until much of our relationships and interactions are centred around droids themselves and how they can be useful to us. Here are just some of the roles that humanoid robots could soon fill in. Personal assistants. Recent research and developments into the software that humanoid robots run on has shown they can be used to assist humans with menial, everyday tasks, such as chores around the house, running errands, and personal administration. In a developing world in which fewer and fewer humans are willing to undertake low-paid, mundane vocations, humanoid robots can be used to take our place. While some might argue there are automated technologies that will do these things already without the need of a robot, such as smart houses, which enable fridges and cupboards to stock themselves, and self-driving cars that act as chauffeurs all on their own. Others would argue that humanoid robots add a familiar personal element that you can't get by using these things. You can talk to your robot, develop a bond, and have the lifelong companion that a lot of people struggle with. With AI, they can be programmed to suit each individual person with personalised responses, intelligent conversations, and a detailed database of everything personal to the owner. Humanoid robots are the perfect tool to use for personal assistance, because they can be personalised to every individual. For example, the Lynx robot is the most advanced personal assistant robot on Amazon, and since it's Amazon's own robot, it comes with Alexa enabled and is compatible with any Alexa home device. Therefore, it's ideal for household chores that involve smart home technology and automation. Lynx is versatile and entirely autonomous, serving as either a general personal assistant, a mentor, a friend, or a companion. Healthcare assistants or carers. Humanoid robots can also be used in healthcare, particularly to assist the elderly, the physically or mentally disabled, or anyone with particular medical or psychological needs. Studies have shown that when robots have a familiar, human-like appearance, people tend to feel more inclined to form a bond with them. The typical mechanical exterior-looking robot can be scary and rather unpleasant-looking. Whilst they know it's not another actual human, the humanoid appearance puts people at ease and enables relaxed compatibility. Most consumer humanoid robots can be customised to have the appearance of a loved one or a friend. This is particularly useful in cases of loss and the subsequent resulting grief. If someone has lost a loved one, they could hypothetically purchase a humanoid robot and have it customised to look and speak like a loved one. They can provide emotional support in this case by offering advice, acknowledging difficult emotions, and by mimicking the caregiving responses of an actual human. Teaching and mentoring While Nadine and other social robots like her are not yet commercially available, their hopes that they could one day appear in offices, classrooms and nurseries across the world. They can assist children with special needs, read stories, access a wide variety of educational resources online, offer advice, and communicate with other members of the child's family. This makes them ideal for a classroom environment and many more roles beyond. Romance. Human relationships have changed dramatically over time. From a traditional inevitability and show of status to something entirely personal to each human. Nowadays, we don't see relationships under the same rigid gaze. 
we still have the traditional monogamous partnerships. But now we have thriving polygamous parties, casual encounters are more widely accepted, and in some cases, humans are opting out of human-human relationships entirely. With the world falling to pieces around us and an ongoing epidemic keeping us isolated in our homes, more and more people are turning to inanimate objects and toys to keep them stimulated and fulfilled, while they can't experience actual human contact. Pleasure dolls have been around since they were first advertised in magazines in 1968, but these were always lacking in animation and that sense of realism. Up until recently, pleasure robots were mainly just fleshed out blow-up dolls with more realistic appearances. For example, in 1997, roboticist Matt McCullen constructed silicon mannequins that he dubbed real dolls and claimed were realistic, poseable, and life-sized. However, there was widespread criticism about the biological accuracy of his dolls, and the lack of animation. It's only in recent years that the development of the AI pleasure robot has really gone into full swing. As of 2018, several models are being constructed, with AI technology that will allow them to hold stimulating and balanced conversations, remember important data, and simulate various emotions. Some models can be customised using a mobile app to personalise the robot's outfit, personality and voice to suit the individual user. These pleasure robots have, unsurprisingly, divided critics across the globe, due to their connotations and what they could mean for future relationships. Some, like David Levy, argue that human-robot romantic and pleasure relationships will be beneficial to society because they'll give those that struggle with human relationships a way to feel companionship, bonding and connection, without any of the stress and uncertainty they usually feel. This is particularly advantageous for adults on the autism spectrum, or those with social anxiety and low confidence. But have humanoid robots redefined human relationships? When we consider the nature of automation and smart technology, it can be argued that human relationships have definitely changed. We're relying more on technology to interact with each other and spending less time interacting in person. We use our devices for pretty much everything we can. This is eliminating the need for human-to-human -human interaction. As smart technology becomes normal, it's possible we could end up becoming dependent on these tools and could even forget how to interact with each other in person. Automated delivery services, subscriptions, drone collection and delivery, and other smart features mean you can do all of your errands from home without ever having to interact with another person. This might be beneficial to those with social difficulties in the short term, but in the long run it would be detrimental to our ability to function as social beings. If we don't ever have to interact, we won't need to remember how. We'll forget the norms and social rules, and communication outside of technology could completely collapse. Furthermore, the case of Sophia the robot and her citizenship shows that we've already opened our mind to the idea that human nature stretches beyond having a human body. But when inanimate objects such as these are given rights that some humans aren't granted, it begs the question, who is human and who is not? What makes a human if a robot can be granted rights, but a human cannot? The introduction of non-human, but human-like, AI-driven machines shows that our idea of what makes each of us human is already in debate. We're constantly looking for ways to get away from human-to-human -human relationships and our own mortal nature. They are the future of what we could be, which means there could one day be a world in which real human relationships cease to exist altogether. So what do you make of these robots and human relationships? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below, and help us by growing this community whilst working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.